All right, so we're going to shift gears a little bit, and we are going to talk about laws which really support physical activity for individuals with disabilities, which impacts individuals with autism and their ability to have opportunities for physical activity. So just in case you haven't seen yet, uh, Crip Camp is an amazing video movie that you should definitely see and it will talk a little bit more about the disability revolution and you know why some of these laws that we're gonna talk about became part of our society. So if you want to see this, it is on Netflix, um, or you can also pause the video and take out your phone and scan this QR code that I've posted and that will take you to the full documentary on YouTube, which is free also. So definitely a must see. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the Rehabilitation Act, which was passed in 1973. So the Rehab Act really was the first legislation passed to focus on not allowing discrimination to happen to individuals with disabilities in programs that were receiving federal funds. So it mandated that any program that was receiving federal assisted money had to be accessible for individuals with disabilities. And so part of that was Section 504 out of this Public Law 102-569. And this talks about public programs including school, interscholastic athletics, extracurricular activities, as well as city and county recreation agencies because they receive federal funds coming through the state level. And they need to allow qualified individuals the opportunity to participate in programming that they offer. So if a county rec program has a summer camp, then they need to be able to provide accommodations for individuals with disabilities to be able to participate in that camp. And so this was the first part um, within our society of where programs receiving those federal front funds had to um, allow individuals with disabilities to participate. And really they had to make their programs accessible for individuals with disabilities. So next, in 1990, came the Americans with Disabilities Act. And so this was really a push for equal opportunities for individuals with disabilities in both public and private sectors that there can not be any discrimination based solely on disability. And so a lot of this act focused on living, employment, housing, education, transportation, stating that even private sectors could not discriminate because of an individual having a disability. Therefore, you know, they, you couldn't employ them because they had a disability, right? Or you couldn't provide them housing because they had a disability. But the benefit of this act is that it also included recreation as part of it. And so, any rec program, even in the private sector, cannot officially discriminate and say, no, sorry, you can't participate here um, based on the ADA, the American with Disabilities Act. So it defines an individual with a disability as one who has a physical or mental impairment that substantially limits one or more major like activity. And this is important to note because it's different than another law that we're going to talk about that has to do primarily with education that defines disability differently than the ADA. So American with Disability Act states that they have to have a disability that substantially limits one or more major life activity, which could include seeing, hearing, speaking, walking, caring for oneself, working, learning, or participating in recreation. Um, so that's super interesting and super exciting that recreation is part of American with Disabilities Act. So that's 
increasing the ability of physical activity for individuals with disabilities. And crazy to think that we just celebrated this past year 30 years of Americans with Disabilities Act, something that you think would be in place way before the 1990s. So I have the date 2010 because many of these acts are updated, what they're called amended. And so ADA was amended in 2010, and that's why you see the other date as well. So let's continue to talk about ADA. So it includes private sectors, which prior, when we were talking about the Rehabilitation Act, it only talked about public, right, that received federal funds. But ADA talks about the private sector, public, and also nonprofit agencies, right? So if they're delivering a recreation service, they must apply accommodations and modifications to their programs for individuals with disabilities as requested. And so that's really important. So this ADA Act was really about providing equal access within the community for individuals with disabilities. And so schools, YMCA's, parks, rec departments, athletic clubs, private uh, fitness centers, um, organizations that provide recreation cannot exclude individuals based upon just having a disability from their services, their programs, or their activities. And so that's really um, important that discrimination can occur. Now, the other part is that is, okay, what type of accommodation or modification do they have to provide? So they talk about the reasonable modifications and accommodations, right? So based upon the knowledge, of individuals that run these programs um, really can limit how knowledgeable they are about changes as far as accommodations and modifications to make to allow individuals with ASD to be successful um, within their recreation program. And so a lot of this has to do with promoting knowledge and best practices and strategies that work that can easily be implemented into current programs to allow future success for individuals with autism to be successful. And so part of ADA says that um, they don't have to actually fundamentally alter their program. They do, however, have to modify and accommodate rules, policies, or practices to allow an individual with a disability to be able to participate. And so that kind of gets into that gray area that becomes a little bit wishy-washy on what all do they have to do um, in order to provide that accessibility for individuals with autism or with disabilities. All right, so shifting to our last and final law, is going to be IDEA, which is the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, which was passed in 1972 and was amended in 2004. Now, this act specifically has to do with our education system. And so IDEA is really what first started special education as far as individualized education programs, stating that each student will have this education program that's individualized to their needs and includes birth through up to uh, age 22, so the day right before they turn 22. And within this act, it talks about that parents and of these children with disabilities should receive free and appropriate education, and that education should be in the placement or setting that is their least restricted environment. So as much as possible, individuals with disabilities or within this course, individuals with ASD should be provided their education in the general education classroom or general physical education um, to the greatest extent appropriate based upon their needs. So we want students with disabilities to be educated in the same environment as their peers if they can be safe and successful when it comes to physical activities. Um, IDEA also allowed parent input for making education decisions and also student input um, to be able to kind of individualize and mold this education program to be beneficial for each individualized individual with disabilities. 
So it goes on to define special education, meaning specially designed instruction. Also that this instruction and this education is at no cost to parents and needs to meet the unique needs of that child having a disability. Now within IDA, disability is really 13 different disability categories. So in order to qualify for special education, a student with a disability must qualify for one of those 13 disability categories. And most of those disability categories state that that disability must adversely affect their education performance. So if it's not affecting their education performance, just because they have that disability doesn't mean that they qualify for special education um, under IDEA. Now, very unique is that when IDEA defines special education, it actually includes the instruction of physical education and goes on to define what physical education is and also uh, the need for individualized physical education, including adapted physical education. And IDEA also includes recreation as a potential related therapy or related service uh, as far as rec therapy and that individualized transition, individualized transition plans or ITPs should also include uh, recreation and leisure opportunities as well. So all of these laws have really kind of influenced our education system and our communities to enhance opportunities and access for individuals with ASD to be able to have an increased level um, of opportunities to participate in physical activity throughout their education system and also throughout their community through both the public and private sectors.